Have you ever noticed that companies don't seem to care about job seekers? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm gonna tell you why. Hey everybody, it's Brian from A Life After Layoff, and today I wanna to share with you why it seems like companies don't care about job seekers. But before we get into that, I actually have a newsletter that I created that you might wanna consider if you're looking for a job, and it's designed to teach you how to reclaim your control and your power and give you actionable tips and techniques to get back into the workforce as quickly as you can, and probably more importantly, to identify some of these low quality employers so that you're only getting the best possible opportunities. Keep in mind, it's absolutely free. I will leave a link down in the comments below. If you've been in the modern workforce over the last few years, it does seem like employers can kind of get away with whatever they want. They can hire people whenever they want. They can lay people off without any notice, seemingly without any consequence. And the same thing goes for the average job seeking experience. Employers can jerk job seekers around. They can make them jump through endless hoops. They can pull offers at the last minute. They can do all of these things that really tally up to a terrible experience. Yet it doesn't seem like there's any consequence. And at times it almost feels like it's an adversarial relationship. You'll sit in an interview where an interviewer will belittle your experience and they'll question your job gaps and make you feel like you're not good enough. Furthermore, they'll ask you to sit through round after round of panel interview. They'll ask you to do a take-home assignment, but they'll barely even recognize that you did. And at the end of it, they'll present you with a lowball offer and expect you to be happy about it. But the reality for a lot of job seekers is, is that's kind of what the market is, and it's either you take it or you leave it. Now, if you watch this channel, you are learning how to reclaim control in your career, and so we can avoid some of these employers, but for the average job seeker, it does seem rather adversarial. So why is this the case? Well, I think we have to look at the dynamics. I have talked a lot about the power pendulum that swings back and forth in the modern workplace. And traditionally, the power pendulum has been slanted towards the employer. And in an employer-driven market, where there are more people than there are jobs, or at least good jobs, employers can get away with it because the average employee needs the employer more than they need them. As a result of all these layoffs, you have a lot more candidates looking for the same jobs, and in a lot of cases, an employer can post a relatively crappy job, one that you may not have even given the time of day a couple of years ago, but they can get a thousand applications in the matter of a couple of days. And it's like the law of supply and demand. When an employer feels that they can replace you easily, there's not much incentive for them to treat you properly in the interviewing process. And I think a lot of senior managers kind of look at that, especially for bigger companies where they'll be a little high on their horse and they'll think that they're the bee's knees as far as jobs are concerned and that you should be lucky that we're even talking to you. And I can think of a few companies off the top of my head that kind of operate with a sense of entitlement and arrogance. And despite all of that, you'll go onto their website and they'll say all the right things, that they value their people and that they wanna be the best possible employer, yet their actions rarely back up those empty words. And in a lot of cases, I think that the talent acquisition departments have the best of intentions, but either the process is too big, it's too cumbersome, it gets away from them, we're probably more realistic. The business doesn't necessarily look at talent acquisition as a true business partner. They look at talent acquisition as pure overhead and as a result, not that valuable. And the problem with that becomes is I've seen more than one company put together all these really great talent acquisition strategies where they say they want to do all these right things and they sit at the top of the pulpit trying to get people to listen, but hiring managers and other senior leaders just don't have time for it and they kind of let things go to the wayside. In a lot of cases, it's the Wild West where hiring managers will do whatever they want and there's not seeming the consequence because that check and balance, they, they kind of brush the talent acquisition teams off. And we look at the recruiter hiring manager relationship, especially in organizations that don't truly value talent acquisition, the hiring manager typically acts like an order giver and the recruiter acts like an order taker. And if you don't have a strong talent acquisition team, the recruiter is maybe too junior or doesn't have, man, let's face it, doesn't have a backbone and doesn't push back on hiring managers who have unrealistic expectations, then a lot of times the processes, no matter how good they are, are not followed and it slips into this very mediocre at best candidate experience. And this is a symptom oftentimes of hiring managers being a little too siloed in their worlds. They're so focused on just doing their job, their day-to-day -day job, that they don't really know how to hire people properly. And in a lot of cases, when you sit through these interviews, hiring managers and people on the panel that you're interviewing with have almost no formal interview training. And at best, it might be a one or two hour course where they're taught how to ask certain questions on their interview guide and what competencies they're supposed to be assessing and maybe a few illegal questions that you shouldn't ask. But that's the extent of it. And at worst, I've seen them given no training at all and just sent in to interview people. And so it's no wonder that these hiring managers have 
I mean, essentially they have no idea what they're doing and then they kind of fall back into their own job expertise and think that they're the smartest person in the room. And unfortunately I've worked with more than one hiring manager who felt that their job was so important and so inflated that nobody could possibly be effective enough or they'd been in their job or in that company for so long that they'd lost touch of what was really going on in the open market and they'd expect the moon, but they'd be paying peanuts for it. So if you don't have a strong talent acquisition department and specifically a strong recruiter hiring manager relationship, where the recruiter should be acting like a subject matter expert, they should be guiding the hiring manager through the process and giving them feedback, coaching, and guidance. Then in a lot of cases, the hiring manager starts to dictate the terms of the interviewing process. And as a result, it usually doesn't work too well for the job seeker. Now, I'm not gonna say that this is a blanket statement for every hiring manager, because I've worked with some excellent ones in my career, but I've worked with a handful that had a kind of disgusting mindset about the average job seeker. For example, I've had more than one hiring manager tell me, don't hire somebody who's been laid off because they're damaged goods. And clearly most people in the world have been laid off at least once by now. So does that mean that nobody is hireable? And if you look at round after round of layoffs that happen to some of these major companies, surely they're not just laying off low performers. And in fairness, I think we have to be honest and admit that low performers probably are caught up in those early rounds, but to have a blanket statement saying, don't hire anybody who's been laid off because they're damaged goods is just really off-putting. Kind of taking it a step further, I've heard hiring managers having very unrealistic expectations about what skills an employee should have I've had to push back and tell them like, hey, listen, that's just not the reality of the market. And in a lot of cases you can influence people, but I've dealt with some pretty bullheaded hiring managers who felt that they were the smartest person in the room. And I'm not talking about the good hiring managers here, but in those cases, these bad hiring managers often look at hiring as a necessary evil. It's just something they gotta get done. They wanna get the right person in place but they don't really know how to go about doing it. And certainly if you're in talent acquisition and you're watching this, I'm sure you'd be nodding your head here, but trying to get certain hiring managers to follow established processes is like pulling teeth, like trying to get feedback in a timely manner, for example, or trying to get them to make a decision on a candidate instead of just like collecting people and then waiting for a better one to come in behind them. Because all that stuff does happen and that's just the reality of hiring. But from a recruiting and talent acquisition perspective, there has to be some ownership there where a lot of times these processes are bad. I've walked into some companies and I've looked at their processes and like kind of shook my head and said, why the heck are you doing this? Why are you adding in this extra step here? This is very uncandidate focused over here and asking everybody to do assessments or to do a take home assignment is just not candidate focused. And sometimes you get these companies to go, huh, we didn't even think of it that way. And for the worst hiring processes I've ever encountered as both a job seeker and as a talent acquisition professional, the people who've designed them are not people who have been involved in hiring in a professional manner. It's usually some people leader or somebody that doesn't have a talent acquisition background and I'll sit there and scratch my head and go, yeah, of course, this makes sense. And as a result, there's a lot of incompetence. And I wouldn't say that it's because they're incompetent people, that they're not smart. It's that you don't have experience working in a certain field. Like for example, I won't go into a software development team and tell them how to write their code because it's not my, my space, it's not my wheelhouse. I don't know that as well as they do. Same thing goes for talent acquisition. A lot of times people assume that it's easy. A lot of job seekers assume that it's easy and that it should be done correctly. And I would challenge everybody who thinks that talent acquisition is easy to go off and get a talent acquisition job. If you do truly think it's this easy, go off and get a job. Everybody should be required to work a talent acquisition job for one year, work with a variety of hiring managers and just see how it goes. And then you'll come back to me probably with a little bit of a different tune. But the fact of the matter is, is that there is some incompetence in the processes themselves. Now, there's a lot of people who say this, and this is gonna be unpopular for me to mention this, is they'll say, companies don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to hire their way out of a paper bag. They don't know what they're looking for. The reality is, is that most companies know exactly what they're looking for. But the bigger issue is they don't have a realistic expectation. Now we as a job seeker also have to own our portion of it where we have to present ourselves in a clear methodical manner because in almost every case when I encountered a job seeker who was very frustrated about not getting phone calls or failing an interview and I go in and I look at their profile, I look at their resume, I look at their LinkedIn presence, I looked at their interview strategy and they're not really selling themselves very effectively. So listen, it's easy to throw darts at recruiters, it's easy to throw darts at hiring managers and companies and just say blanket statement, they don't know what they're doing. But the reality is, is that there's a little bit of blame probably to go all around. Now, of course, this doesn't excuse companies from behaving poorly, 
pulling offers at the last minute. And one of my least favorite things is the ghosting. Ghosting happens. I made a whole other video about it if you're interested. Sometimes it's easier to ghost than it is to be good and organized at your job. And that's the unfortunate reality. Now, unfortunately, there's no clear answer about how we can change this other than speaking about it. I try to have a voice. I try to go on my LinkedIn and talk about it, trying to raise awareness with people who might be in hiring capacities to start thinking, do I own any part of this? Can I get better? Can I have a better relationship with my recruiter that I'm working with? And that's the best that I can do. And use the job seeker can do your part by not giving your energy to low quality job opportunities, vote with you are not giving them an application pass it by and move on to the next one because if enough people don't apply for their jobs against the law supply and demand eventually they'll change their tune and of course you want to make sure that you're presenting yourself in the most effective manner so it's like help us help you and i think a lot of people struggle with that if you are somebody that struggles with it that's actually something that i specialize in i've got a website called lifeafterlayoff.com which is loaded with tips and tricks all from an insider's perspective and I share my deepest and most intimate knowledge in the form of some training courses. The first one is called Resume Rocket Fuel, which is going to teach you how to write a recruiter approved resume that'll hopefully get your foot in the door. It's a really robust course. I walk you step by step through exactly how to write a resume and exactly how to customize a resume that's going to give you the best chance of getting noticed. And once you get your foot in the door, it's then up to you to market yourself through the entirety of the interview process. And that's where the ultimate job seeker bootcamp comes in. I walk you through each round of the interview process. I break down exactly what it is that you need to know, what it is that they're looking for, and I give you tips and techniques on how to get through it, ultimately to get you to that job offer, and we teach you how to negotiate it so you don't leave any money on the table. And if you wanna skip the recruiter altogether, and that's the preferable method of getting your foot in the door, you want to unlock the power of LinkedIn. And that's where it created the course, Unlocking LinkedIn, which teaches you how to set up your profile to get recruiters to start noticing you. And more importantly, how to skip recruiters altogether and get right into the interview process. It's a really robust course on targeted networking. And I think you'll find a lot of value there. And so if you're struggling in your job search, I would encourage you to check those out. So that's my little rant on why employers seem to dislike job seekers. So let me know your thoughts. Why do you think employers dislike job seekers so much? Leave a comment and let me know. As always, appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.